as as folks are coming in, just a reminder. Uh, we ask that you uh, do not record uh, via uh, cell phone, also camera. Um, that's prohibited. We will have it though up NCAA dot veritone dot com and then you also get a transcript here shortly and then uh please silent your cell phones as uh, we get ready to talk with uh, student athletes and coaches and then if you're asking a question uh, if you could just uh, provide your name and media affiliation before every question that you ask and then uh, finally those individuals that are using zoom uh, we'll we'll try to get you but we'll We'll be uh, taking questions uh, from the audience first, but if you do have a question, use that hand feature. Thank you. Also, just, just for, for your knowledge, we'll be able to talk with uh, Virginia for, for 12 minutes, and we'll only have 10 minutes. Or excuse me, we'll be able to talk with Colorado State for 12 minutes, and we'll uh, only have uh, Virginia for 10 minutes. Thank you. Really excited to, to welcome to the stage the Colorado State Rams, who were victorious tonight, 67-42 over Virginia. It was the first uh, win for the Rams in the NCAA tournament since 2013. They move on to play Thursday against Texas in Charlotte at 650. Uh, up here, Joel Scott, a double-double, 23 points, 11 rebounds. Nick Clifford, another double-double, 17 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. Uh, before we get to questions for our student-athletes, uh, head coach uh, Nico Medved joins us. Coach, just your thoughts on on the performance here this evening from your group. I mean, just, just a terrific performance, really, on both ends of the floor um, from the opening tip. Um, our guys came with a great edge, a great focus, uh, did a great job of – uh, playing together on both ends of the floor. And I thought as the game continued to go on, um, we just continued to, to be fundamentally sound and, and tough-minded. And, you know, listen, I mean, um, we felt like we had an opportunity to, to win here tonight. But, but, but you know, that's a, 
that's a Hall of Fame coach over there. Uh, that's an incredible program, one that I have an unbelievable amount of respect for. And so, you know, I didn't see see this this coming like this way uh, uh, um, tonight at all. Um, but I'm pretty pleased. <laughs> so re re really pleased with our guys. I mean, these two young men and our whole guys just brought it tonight and uh, just stayed in the moment. And um, what an incredible win for these guys in our program. Uh, questions for our student athletes first. We'll open up the floor. Let's go to the first row in the middle. Mike Perhorn from CSU Rams. Earlier today, uh, you guys discussed what Virginia's strengths were, their defense. But Coach also implored you to use what he calls your superpowers. Don't you feel like being physical is one of those? And how did you prove that tonight? Joel? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I think all year we've been talking about uh, setting the tone phys physically, uh, whether that be in the paint, whatever we're doing defensively, offensively. And I think tonight that really showed up. And I think it needs to carry on throughout the rest of the tournament and on to the next game at least. And so I think we just need to keep setting that tone and keep going, doing our thing. Neat. The other half of that is also the way you guys play perimeter defense on your two big shooters. Um, did you and, and uh, Josiah talk a little bit of just the importance of your role in the defense and, and how you could hold them down? Uh, definitely. Those are good players over there. They can really shoot the ball. Uh, so we knew their strengths and knew what we had to do. Me and Josiah have been doing that all year, just trying to motivate each other to keep to start start the game off right and set the tone defensively, uh, try and just take guys' strengths away. And so I feel like we did that tonight. Other questions for our student athletes? Let's go first row on the end. Damon Cook, Rocky Mountain Collegian. Um, Joel, you had your biggest game in your CSU career in the biggest game of your CSU career. But you're not shy to big moments, obviously. Black Hills State, you led them to the Final Four last year in D2. Did you feel like the lights got brighter tonight, or is it just kind of some of the same? Um, honestly, I think it was just more enjoying the moment. Uh, we're, we're on a big stage, uh, very cool experience. Not everyone gets to do this. And so it's more just enjoying the moment, having fun with it, uh, executing the game plan coaches give us, and trusting your teammates, and again, just having fun and going out there and playing your game. Let's go to the second row on the end. Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. For both of you guys, obviously growing up close to each other in the Pikes Peak area, what does it mean for you guys to both have the games you did on, on this stage and kind of represent where you guys are from and on this stage? Man, it's pretty cool. It's pretty special to be able to play with uh, guys that you grew up with and see, see them be successful as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people back home supporting us and sending their love out this way. So we definitely feel feel the love over here and just proud to be able to represent them on the biggest stage. Joel? Yeah, uh, kind of like what Nick said, it's, it's pretty cool to be playing with people you grew up uh, playing against, playing with. I mean, uh, we've we've been playing against each other for, shoot, I don't, I don't even remember how long at this point, but uh, him and Javante. So it, it's pretty cool to be able to uh, play play with them now and see them do what they're doing. And, you know, we're, we're not done yet, and it's exciting, and it's cool to have, like Nick said, the support that we do from back home. Let's go to the first row. Kevin Lytle, Colorado. And there was, you know, obviously some surprise with the seedings. Was that any kind of motivation, prove it wrong type of factor, or, you know, mindset for you guys all, or did it not really, you know, play in at all? We definitely uh, took it took it a little personal. We felt like we were uh, better than the seed we got, but you know we were super grateful to be a part of the tournament. Um, you know, especially to go against a team uh, like Coach Medved said that has the history that they do. Uh, we were just excited to go against an opponent like that and just be able to prove ourselves and the things that we've been able to do all season. Joel. Yeah, again, pretty much like Nick said, it's just <laughs> well, we're, we're excited to be in the tournament. We've worked all year uh, to get here, and so to finally be here, play, play someone like Virginia is just it, it's a special opportunity. So it's super exciting to be here and be where we are. Two more questions for our student athletes. Let's go to the second row on the outside. All right, Deion Cash, it ain't weekly. Um, two questions. It felt like it was kind of easy for you guys because they play a slow tempo. Do you think that played to your advantage? And how did it feel to play on the arena, you know, in front of a national audience like this? 
Joel? Um, I don't think it was easy. I don't think anything against them is easy. Uh, I think we uh, executed uh, Coach's game plan the way, the way he wanted us to, which definitely helped. Um, but I also just think uh, playing playing in an arena like this is special. Uh, I <laughs> I walked in and it just took a moment just to look look around and see all the fans that came out to just watch, and it is just a super cool experience, something you dream of as a kid. Nick, can you repeat the question one more time? My fault. <laughs> just the experience, the arena. Yeah. Um, okay. No, nah, like Joe said, it's never easy. Uh, they're a really good team, but I feel like we did execute at a high level, took away their strengths that they're they're really good at, and then we didn't let them take out take us out out of our game plan. Uh, we stuck to what we do and uh, just were confident in that. Third round. Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera, uh, Neek. I haven't watched your career. You know, one of the numbers besides the shooting numbers that, that's jumped out to me is your assist numbers. You, you had six more today. What do you kind of credit uh, this season for kind of getting that aspect of your game kind of more front and center this year? Shoot, credit my teammates for making shots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't be able to get assists if they didn't make shots, so I'll just give the credit to them. Um, and then the coach is just putting me in uh, perfect situations to be able to make plays and um, distribute the ball. Neek, Joel, it was a fantastic showing. Congratulations. A historic season continues. And uh, best of luck uh, on Thursday. Safe travels. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, John. All right. Let's, uh, let's open up the floor. Let's go first row here in the middle uh, with questions for Coach Medved. Nico, were you almost as impressed with just how persistent your team was, not just offensively and waiting to get the shot you wanted, but defensively and continuing to apply pressure? Yeah, you know, one of the things we we talked about, and, and again, I don't want to keep gushing about Tony and his team, but, you know, they're one of the slowest, if not the slowest playing team offensively in the country. But if you look at us, uh, we're one of the top two in the country on defensive tempo, meaning we force teams to play late in the shot clock. So like I told our guys, that's nothing new for us. That's what we do every day. We're not afraid to guard for long periods of time in the half court. And so I think we felt comfortable in those situations defensively. Uh, um, so our guys, I thought, stayed really, really disciplined, communicated well. And our mindset tonight is we were just wanted to grind out possessions, just grind it out on both ends of the floor um, because that's the kind of game that it was. And so um, I think that's something that we practice, and we had that mindset, and I thought our guys executed it beautifully. A second row on the end. Yeah, Nico Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. I think they went scoreless for about almost 14 minutes. It was like an hour of real time. What, what kind of went into that from your end, and what does that do to an opponent when it's just that long without scoring in a big game? Well, you know, they're used to doing that to opponents. You know, they've kind of made a living on, on, on doing that. You know, I, I, again, um, I, as you say that, I didn't realize it at the time. It was just uh, our guys did a great job, I thought, of challenging shooters, uh, defeating screens, uh, helping appropriately in the lane, helping the helper. Uh, when they got into the paint, we did a great job of challenging without fouling, uh, and we held them to one shot for the, for, for, for the most part. And so that's a pretty good recipe uh, um, right there, and we tried to make them take difficult shots, and I thought for the most part um, we were able to do that. A first row. Coach Caleb Allen, KCSU, and over your three wins in the last week, it's been different guys. It hasn't been Isaiah Stevens beating or leading the charge. It's been Jalen Lake, Joe Palmer. Tonight it was Neek and Joel. How important is it for you to get those guys going? Not just last week, but heading into this tournament, especially when Isaiah hasn't played as well. No, game. it's it's huge. And I again, I you know, we talked a lot about you know trusting our training and 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 trusting ourselves. And again, you look at our team and what has been some of our strengths, and it's been it's for a while. High assists, low turnovers. You know, we're one of the top teams in the country in assist rates. So, what does that mean? Our baskets come off assisted field goals, and that's sharing the ball, playing to the next guy. And against this team tonight, if you want to try to play one on one against Virginia, you've got no chance. Um, and our guys bought into it. I explained to him today at Shooter on. I'm like, listen. No one, it's not about getting frustrated at all if no one's, if you're not getting a shot or you're not getting your averages. We just play the way we want to play. And it ended up being certain guys' night. Neek did a great job tonight of driving closeouts, getting in the lane, attacking when they loaded. I mean, obviously, Isaiah draws a ton of attention. 
but he didn't panic at all. He just played the right way like he, like he does. And then obviously Joel Scott got it going inside, but just a tremendous job by our guys of just playing the way we wanted to play. Let's go to the fifth row in the back. Richmond Times Dispatch. I'm, I'm curious, your defense on Beekman was very solid. Did it help that the outside guys weren't hitting shots to allow you to sort of do a little bit of packing it in yourselves? Oh, of course. I mean, Beekman's an, just a terrific player. I mean, on both ends of the ball. Just a tremendous amount of respect watching watching his game, you know, throughout the year. Yeah, we were able to do a good job of, you know, trying to stay in front of him or keep a chest in front of him in the lane. And um, they did miss some, some some good looks, but I also thought we did a really good job of challenging shooters, too. I thought we did a good job of closing out uh, um, and making it difficult on those guys. But He's such a good player, and when he put the ball on the floor in the lane, you know, we didn't step up too early and overhelp because he's such an elite passer. And if you do that, he's going to find the open guy and tried to make him a finisher as best we could. And uh, um, he's good at that too, but it, but it ended up over the long run paying off for us. Unfortunately, we only have 12 minutes with Colorado State. Last question is going to be uh, first row here on the end. Nico, after the selection, so Sunday, you kind of addressed the room and said a lot of these teams and these play-ins kind of create momentum and go on big runs. Could tonight have gone any more perfectly for kind of building that foundation for potential momentum heading into? Well, I, I tell you what, it's hard to imagine tonight going any better for us, but I'm just so proud of our guys. The way they've handled the last 48 hours um, has just been incredible. The preparation, the travel, uh, uh, um, the mentally having to, 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 you know, from Selection Sunday to now, they've just done a beautiful job, and their mindset is just thankfulness, grateful to be here, playing the greatest tournament in the world. And I told the guys today, listen, only 9% of the teams get an at-large bid. <laughs> so that's pretty special to do that. So let's go play. And we did tonight, and now we're excited about the next one. We get to go on a plane to Charlotte here, and we get ready for Texas on Thursday. 25 and 10, uh, 6.50 the tip time on Thursday. Coach, uh, it's been a joy having you here in Dayton. Thank you so much. Best of luck Thank on you. Thursday. At this time, we, we welcome to the stage the Virginia Cavaliers and uh, Reese Beekman, uh, 15 points, four assists, three rebounds. Jordan Miner, seven points, was three of four from the field. And then their head coach, uh, Tony Bennett. Uh, before we get questions for our student athletes, uh, Coach, just, just a statement on your team's season and, and what this group was able to do this year. Yeah, I mean, right now it probably sounds or feels like hollow praise, but um, – you know, knowing what, how Reese led us um, and to get to this point, to win 23 games and where they finished in the ACC is a credit to them. And I think you saw it tonight, you know, when teams really make it hard on Isaac and Reese, um, it's tough. We've had a number of games where we've gotten um, beat handily and the credit goes to Colorado State. They are a hard-nosed, tough defensive team and they run their stuff well. Nico does a great job and their physicality bothered us. But, um, you know, I, th I look at the job Reese did on, on their excellent point guard, Isaiah Stevens. He, he did the job there. They just had some ways. I thought Jordan gave us a lift and stretches, but um, there's a hard way to go out. There's no question about that. But I'm proud of these guys for getting us to this point. It is a hard tournament to qualify. You want to be playing your best when you get into it, and obviously we did not do that, 
And, uh, but it doesn't change anything about, um, you know, this guy's career and what he's done for four years. I've never seen a guy get better and better. And um, someone's going to be very fortunate at the pro level to have this guy. So, but uh, I'm grateful for the way they are. And it's just a, a tough way to go out, of course. Questions for Reese and Jordan. We will start in the first row on the end. Reese, just your emotion on you know that being your final game at Virginia, everything you've accomplished, and then as Coach mentioned, a, a tough way to end it. Your, your kind of thoughts on that? Um, yeah, you know that was a tough way to go out. Didn't imagine it to go that way at all. But you know, I'm just you know blessed to have a a career here, a four years. You know, I've been able to play since almost basically day one, and you know I know that's not usual. So I'm just, um, you know, looking back at it, happy about the experience, you know, happy being back here, um, you know, doing my last year of college. And it was just a blessing. So I'm, you know, I don't want to define this game just to define my whole season or my whole career. So, um, yeah, it's tough, but, you know, I'm glad to be in this position. Just on our end, uh, if you could say your name and media affiliation, it's greatly appreciated. Let's go to the second row in the middle. Hey, Reese, Gene Wong, Washington Post. What was Colorado State doing to make it so tough shooting for you guys defensively? What were, what were they able to do? Um, yeah, they did a good job, you know, pressuring the ball, um, being in, you know, passing lanes and in the gap. Um, yeah, I think we ran some good offense today as well. We just, you know, the shots weren't falling. But, you know, I do credit them. Um, they mixed it up with their ball screen coverages. Um, just threw different looks would kind of messed us up a little bit. But, um, yeah, I feel like we still ran some good offense. Fourth row uh, outside. David Teal with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Jordan, does there come a point in a game or in a series of games when the shots just won't fall, that as much as you try, your confidence just starts to wane and it becomes mental as much as physical? Um, I would say it's easy to do that. I mean, I was kind of telling Reese and Mac and our guys just keep shooting uh, and believe in themselves. Uh, we know that we're getting good looks and good shots, and they just weren't falling at the at the time that we needed them to. But I still believe in our guys to take those shots, and I kept encouraging them. First row in the middle. Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Jordan, this was your first and last season at UVA. How will you look back on this year? Um, and one word, I, I mean, I would say grateful and blessed. Um, I think in such a short time, this has been family to me. And, I mean, I've just been embraced with open arms, and it's been a blessing to be here. First row in the middle. Reese, obviously, the, the shooting woes aside, defensively, it seemed like you guys struggled to contain them. What did they do? What made them effective? And when you're in a game that's getting away from you like that, and I know you've had some experience with it, but is it hard to buckle down and play the kind of defense that you guys are known for? Yeah, they, you know, they spaced it out well. They, um, their cuts were really hard, a lot of moving parts. So, you know, I was just kind of, I feel like it stretched our defense today. Um, you know, we had some lapses on with the post trap sometimes with a couple of back screen stuff. But yeah, you know, of course, they're, we weren't hitting shots and then they're using, and they used a lot of the clock as well to get, you know, their good shots. So, you know, kind of broke us down. Um, you know, they, I feel like they were just never rushed throughout the game. So, um, credit them for that. Reese, uh, Jordan, you guys are, are welcome to get up. We really appreciate your time, and uh, we really enjoyed having you here in Dayton. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we'll open up the floor now for questions for Coach. Let's start in the first row in the middle. Tony, you've talked a lot about how this team had been knocked to the mat and gotten up time and again this season. Did you think at halftime – were you expecting a similar thing to happen in the second half? I mean, I just, yeah, we tried to open up the floor and attack. And again, as I said, um, Nico's team defensively is really good. Um, and then I think it was alluded to um, when we were struggling. We got a few good looks. I mean, they played good defense, but we were really struggling to score. I thought our defense unraveled. And even when we were in front, their physicality bothered us. They just sort of would lower their shoulder um, and move our guys. And they, they scored right at the paint. And it just kind of, there is a feeling of you felt that before probably a few times. And so, um, you know, the ability to, to come out, I think we started at the half and got the ball in the right spot. And then we missed some free throws and you just felt like, oh, here it goes again. Um, and then they got a couple of easy ones and it separated in a hurry. But uh, the challenge is, is just to, to fight as hard as you can, try to get quality looks. But I think they, um, 
you know, they, we talk trying to impose your will. They impose their will. They, they dominated the game plan in terms of um, their deal. And as I was walking over the podium, I heard Nico say, you know, they're comfortable. Um, they guard and they make it, make you kind of take your time. Not that we're a fast paced team, I know, but there wasn't something there early. And then we again, Reese got some stuff going to the lane. Second row, for it. Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Uh, a little bit along that same line, no matter how much you guard against it, when things just aren't falling at one end and you know, you're frustrated and it just won't fall, is it, is it easy to let that leak into the other end? Absolutely. Um, again, they run good offense, good cuts. Uh, they scored inside and they, they moved the ball. And again, I look at the job Reese did on the, their point guard, which was good. But um, it really is. And again, when they did a good job. When, when teams have taken out Reese and Isaac for us, um, it's been very difficult for us. We don't score. You know, Jordan got a, a post bucket or two, but um, we don't have a lot of um, other options scoring wise. You know, we try to do it in different ways. And Jake was, um, they had him sped up. So that definitely bled into the defense. And uh, again, the way they run there, you, you needed to be so sound all game. And, you know, as they were separating, it seemed like it was an effect where we weren't helping on screens and, um, and doing the things that would have given us a chance to stay somewhat connected. A fourth row back corner. Tony, in early February in Tallahassee, you guys scored 80 points. That was your eighth consecutive ACC win. And from there, this team just seemed to lose its touch offensively. What happened in, in your mind? Yeah, I think, um, I think teams started really uh, zoning off, gapping up on some guys and just making it so hard for Reese and Isaac. They kind of face guarded, zoned off, and then they, they I want to say they, they got a little bit of a blueprint on how to bother us. And we tried to come up with some different things. And, you know, in, in a, I thought we played good ball against NC State and even BC in a, in a Georgia Tech at the end. Um, but a lot of it was predicated. We needed to make some shots and then even, you know, the free throws, but we had to hit some shots just to give us a chance. But they were hard because of how it was jammed in the lane, zoned off of guys in really face guarding or making it difficult on the others. And I think that kind of started happening as people saw, well, here's a way to maybe make it real challenging on us. Only a couple more questions for Coach. Let's go to the third row. Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Coach, what was the scouting report on Neek Clifford and maybe how did it go awry? He really kind of got them going scoring and distributing the ball. Yeah, uh, I mean, their, their veteran play, their experience, um, it really showed. I mean, our, our, we're always just trying to be so sound. And, you know, we, we didn't really take away the lane. We didn't take away the three. And, um, you know, Reese did the job, obviously, on Stevens. But I thought they got loose on some of their screens um, and wide open looks. And it was just to make him earn. But he had his way. And obviously, on the interior, Scott, um, his strength was real. And we, were, um, we looked a little bit rattled, to say the least. And I think that showed as our defense unraveled. And again, I had a lot, some of it had to do with our offensive struggles. But um, they, they have a nice balanced attack. They do. And, um, you know, I can tell they'll be a hard out. I'm sure that they, they'll, they'll play Texas next. And, you know, maybe they they got some more length and can maybe guard in there. But they have experienced players. And I, it said they're very poised. Reese said that. They don't get rushed. They don't get sped up. And um, they, again, that's a credit to Nico and these young men. One more question on the end. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. This is four out of the five last tournaments where you've left without winning a game. You won a national title in there too, which is obviously a huge accomplishment. Do you view these first round early exits as a systemic issue or is each one of them their own kind of thing? Yeah, no, it's frustrating. I think um, when you say systemic, what do you mean by that? Just I mean, do you think there's a problem and it needs to be a fix in the way you do things? Which sure. One's its own? Yeah, I think, um, no, it's frustrating because, you know, before that we've, we've been to a couple Sweet 16s and Elite Eight and a national championship, but there have been some hard losses in the first round, and that is frustrating. Um, uh, some are unique, you know, a COVID pause, uh, key players getting injured, um, and I think absolutely I, I always have to examine, um, you know, our ability to – to advance. Um, we've raised the bar really high here. We've qualified for this tournament, which, which is not an easy thing. Um, we've done well, but it's stung to get to this point and not advance. And so, of course, we've got to keep adding 
quality players. We've got to look at things certainly from a system standpoint, absolutely. And um, I just uh, I, I wish we could could have played better and played quality because we were so excited to get this chance because this team maxed out for the most part in the regular season at times and this happened. But um, but you know it's um, something that I always look in the mirror after every year and say, okay, what adjustments? We got to get the right pieces in place. And um, so I think it's probably both and to be honest. Coach Bennett, uh, tonight was his 500th career game at Virginia, uh, 23 and 11 on the season third in the ACC. Coach, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Hammond Communications, they'll post the recording of this press conference. Um, check out the hub, ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts will be provided soon. Thanks for joining us.